Yes, good morning YouTube. In this video I'll run through installing and configuring the server WMC application on your Windows Media Center or WMC. This is the key piece of software that lets you tap into the media on your WMC and export it to Kodi to make a Media Center extender type of device. Again, it won't be a complete copy of an extender as I covered in earlier videos in this series. Whether it's close enough is up to you to decide, so I'll show you what can be done in the next few videos. The application can be downloaded from this Google Drive web page. I'll have a link in the video description. And as you notice down here in the list of clients for Kodi, you have a choice of Windows, Linux, and Raspberry Pi. So that will limit your choice of hardware. I chose the Raspberry Pi as it's the most economical cost and energy wise but this choice of what client you select will affect some of the server WMC settings so you need to know what you are connecting with prior to starting. Also you need to have Windows Media Center installed and fully configured before you install server WMC. So get all your TV tuners assigned, make sure the EPG is loading, and that you can watch and record live TV on the Windows Media Center. There's some good information on the Kodi Wikipedia page. In the application installs, as you would expect, there's some tips on configuring and downloading and some details on that. And for configuration, I'll walk you through how I have mine set up, noting that some of your settings may be different. In the Status tab, you should have Opened next to the WMC database, and that says everything hooked up. And the channels and tuners should be reasonably close to what you have set up in WMC. The rest of this may not show up until you actually connect a client system. The General tab has the startup settings. If you want to change those, you probably want it to start when Windows starts. The Folders tab links up your recorded TV folders from Windows Media Center. So that's what you have selected under here. And just to show you what I have here, I have that. So the blue fields come from there. So if you have the standard recorded TV path, you should be pretty well set here. My setup's a little different, so let me explain that. I have a, an SSD boot drive on C, so my actual recorded TV folder is on a separate hard drive E. Then I have a Synology network attached storage device named Disk Station where I actually keep all the recorded TV programs and I use the recorded TV manager application to sweep all the local recordings from my three WMC's over to the Disk Station here and because of that I had to change this UNC path to recorded TV 2 to get Cody to be able to see this folder which then has a link to this folder in it. So if you have a non-default setup like I do you might have to play with this a little bit. Uh, so far I've not set up any credentials for my Cody clients. I might try that to see if it makes any difference. Under HTTP service I've left that default under updates I select automatic updates under display options this is for recordings so you can uh, pick a few things here uh, one if you have uh, you know DRM recordings like I mentioned in the previous video you can either hide them or not you're not going to be able to play them so uh, you could you could hide them just so you don't you know, try to play them and find out you can't. Let's see, in the Tuners tab, this will show you the TV tuners that Windows Media Center has. And you can see what clients are connected to what tuners here. 
And then over here, there's also reset buttons on the far right to clear any locked tuners. For instance, if you have a Kodi client that, that locks up and, and maybe doesn't shut down and release a tuner properly. Let's see, the live TV tab, I haven't changed anything there. They have this one grayed out since there's a PVR client for Kodi that doesn't rely on DLNA. And then under the Recordings tab, there's some more display options. This just affects how recordings are displayed on your Kodi system. I found that for Raspberry Pi, I need to select this, Remux Active Recordings. I just leave that checked and everything works, so I'm not going to spend any more time on it. And under the Channels tab, this is where you set up your program guide, channel names, icons. So if you use WMC and something like My Channel Logos, then you can import those logos here, hide or display, uh, DRM, encrypted channels. Now if you do your Kodi channel icons like I showed in an earlier video, you'll probably need to change this uh, the default setting here is name dash number, so it's one dash zero, and what that results in is if you have a channel called KXYZ and it's on virtual channel 4.3, it's going to show up as KXYZ dash 4.3. So I changed mine just to a single one and now what I see is just KXYZ and that way my channel icon named KXYZ.png gets assigned to channel KXYZ. So that'll depend on how you want to deal with those names. Under record, this is when you initiate a recording. Do you want to set the before and after recording time padding, do you want to use Cody's default, or I selected use Windows Media Center default. That way I keep one master start stop time padding in Windows Media Center. I just have to change it one place to affect everything. And then there's just a debug, there's a log uh, directory. If you have any problems and you want to report bugs on the Kodi forums or on the server WMC forum, you need to submit your log file. So that's a good place to find that. Uh, so anyway, that'll wrap up server WMC. In the next video, I'll show you how I have the client set up, so stay tuned for that. Questions welcome in the comments section below. Uh, check out some of my other cable cutting videos in the playlist link here in the video. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel for updates. And as always, thanks for watching.